Hi everyone. Um, I know that I've been kind of quiet on social media lately and I haven't really been addressing what's been going on. I've posted the occasional, you know, resource on my story or whatever, but I, um, I decided that it was time for me to film a video. Um, I've wrestled a lot with whether or not I should post this video, whether or not I should even make one. Um, and I was talking to a couple of my friends the other day and I was like, I don't really know if anyone would want to hear me say this, like hear what I would have to say or um, even, you know, watch a video of me just sitting on my floor talking. But um, I figured even if no one watches this, I think it needs to be said and I think it just needs to be out there. And I know probably like at least 80% of my followers will probably just click through this video or just scroll right past it. Um, and that's fine. I, you know, I'm just doing this for me to get my words out there and to get my opinion um, out there. And if, you know, I've, it's been really, really rough for me. I'm not going to lie. Every time I've sat down to try to film this video, I've just gotten frustrated or, you know, I even wrote um, a page of notes um, of what I can say. So like if I look away during this video or whatever, I'm just looking at my notes to keep me on track because there is so much to say and I don't want to miss anything or like, you know, trip over my words because it's a really hard situation. Uh, so I just wanted to address what's been going on. Um, and I, I want to say, like, for those of you that don't scroll through this and you actually watch it until the end, I'll try to make it brief, but it's going to be really hard. Um, but I'll try to stay within five minutes. But uh, thank you if you do watch this to the end, because uh, I think we all just need a little perspective. Um, so first, I'd like to say, like, for anyone that's posted on their story, recently or donated money to a cause that's advocating for black people right now or you've reached out to a person of color and or posted something on social media giving like your opinion um that's really great and I just want to say thank you I also would like to address um Instagram specifically I know there's it's all over all social media platforms, Twitter, TikTok, Snapchat, everybody's posting, but Instagram is really where a lot of this is coming from. Um, and so I just wanted to, you know, post my opinion on all of that. Um, so right now, it's really cool to care. I, this, some people might take this wrong, that's fine. I don't really care, I'm gonna be honest. Um, because right now, it is cool to care. It's cool to post 30 pictures on your, um, story right now of resources and like really like power to the people posts and stuff like that and we're ordinarily on social media you know everybody kind of rolls their eyes at the friend who's always posting like these social justice warrior posts and you're just like oh give it a rest like I mean everyone's done it I've done it before I've rolled my eyes at someone that's posted 15 you know posts in a row of like things advocating for you know and that's like it's just really toxic and that's what our culture does but like we've all done it i know everyone watching this video has done it at least one time so i it's really cool to care right now and it's cool to be you know posting all these things on our stories and everybody cares but the reality of it is when the media cycle is over and it will be over unfortunately a lot of people are just gonna stop um, and that's just like the reality of like our news cycle and the world and like there are bigger things happening right now like there's a pandemic so people are dying and you know NASA just launched people up into space like there's a lot of current events happening so like I understand that the media cycle does change but I just hope that everyone doesn't stop caring once it becomes not cool to care anymore. So that's just what I want to say on that. I do believe, though, that we, in, in addition to posting, we need to post more individualized posts too. Like it's okay to talk about your own opinion you don't have to just repost something somebody's posted on instagram for fear that people are going to come after you like i don't like i feel like we nitpick each other's words a lot and we don't need to do that i think we can just like read somebody's post or watch somebody's video and just hear them out um so i don't be afraid to post your personal opinion um i also believe that there's a stance um sorry i'm just getting lost in my notes um I think you should reach out and speak up for people, but like, if you're a person that's only reaching out to your friends of color, that there's something wrong with that. Like, 
sure reach out people feel varying degrees about reaching out i know some people that are like i don't want anyone to reach out to me right now i just want you to post on social media some people are like i would really love if people could reach out to me um i've personally gotten a ton of you know really heartfelt messages of people reaching out to me and um asking me if i'm okay and saying they're sorry that this is happening but if you're going to reach out to people you also need to be doing your part on social media and just posting your opinion about things and spreading the word because I think that's the most important thing we need to raise awareness um, in addition to just checking up on our friends but I think it's great that everyone's checking up I want to talk about my biggest qualm with the social media um, I, the best word for it is a trend right now um, performative giving giving donating money has become really 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 popular and i think that's great people are finally donating to all of these causes that they might not have even heard of before so i think that's really great and really important but i my biggest problem with it is it's become so performative on social media i don't really think we need to be posting polls like i donated have you and like screenshotting all the people that say yes and posting on their stories like I, I don't think it really needs to be publicized like if you want to post that you donated sure but I just think it's turned into a bit of a competition and I don't think it needs to be a competition like I don't think it needs to be I donated twenty dollars you only donated five like come on can't you do better than like it's that's kind of what it's turned into and I think that's just a little toxic like I don't think we need to be doing that like, I, I mean, it's like turned into a game almost like there's bingo boards and like, I, like these polls, like I think it's great to donate money. I really do like these organizations don't get nearly enough donations. So I think it's great that everyone's donating, but like, I, I don't think we need to shame other people or turn it into like a game like, oh, if you donate to me and I get a bingo, I'll donate all this money to the, this, this organization. And I know like clubs and uh, you know, organizations are doing their part to just get people to donate and making it fun for people. But when it starts becoming a competition or like a performance, like you just donated so that people that follow you wouldn't judge you. I think that's a little like I even felt bad. I was clicking through people's stories and seeing like, oh, I donated in you or like I saw them scroll through the list of people that had said yes about donating. I felt bad as a person of color, a black woman. <laughs> I felt bad, even though I've donated my money so I think it's become a very very toxic cycle um so just think twice before I don't know like making it a performance that's just that's just me though like I um you know that's just how I feel about it I also want to talk about there's a couple videos that have been circulating on social media I even saw one this morning and it really really like made me like my chest was heavy. There's a lot of videos going around on social media of people being brutally murdered. I legitimately saw two people, I have never in my life, in person or online, like seen someone die, like in real life, other than like a movie. And I, this morning, I was sipping my coffee, scrolling through Instagram stories, and I saw two people, I saw three people gunned down in the streets, like brutally murdered. They were bleeding on the pavement. I think it's really important to raise awareness that people are dying. And like, these, this happened to be like, you know, um, African American males were being shot by other protesters in the street. I don't really know what was happening. And it is dangerous out there. So if you're at a protest, like, please be safe and be careful. But, like, I don't know that we need to be posting videos of murders. Like, I, I, like it didn't trigger me. Like, I've luckily, you know, praise God that I have not had a triggering experience with death, like, that personally affected me. But, like, we have to be really careful about posting videos of people being murdered. Like, I, I think we're losing perspective just a little bit. Like, that can really, really trigger someone badly or give someone nightmares. Like, I saw people lose their lives. Like, I, I, we really need to appreciate the gravity of that situation. Like, that's pretty important. Um, I also, like, if you're at a protest, please be careful right now. Like, and if there happens to be a riot or looting going around, if you choose to participate, that's your prerogative. Um, I'm not going to say whether it's right or wrong because I'm at, safe at home. Like, I'm not out there 
you know, rioting. Um, that's just something my parents don't really feel comfortable letting me and a lot of them are getting violent and I personally just don't feel safe. I'm doing my part at home, posting on social media, donating my money, um, you know, signing petitions. So like there are plenty of ways to get involved. Don't feel bad if you're not at a protest right now. Like they are getting dangerous. And I, my advice to you, if you are at protests and rallies and riots, don't instigate violence. There's been a big, big wave of people that have been joining these movements and they are purposefully instigating violence and they're not with the cause. These are people that just want to make trouble. And I think that's really making this movement, like having a negative light on it, which is really a problem because black men are already being victimized for no reason. So I don't know why we're giving them a reason. Like, it, you know, it's just like, the people with the cause aren't trying to be violent. These protests aren't meant to be violent at first, but there have been like instigators who've infiltrated, you know, the Black Lives Matter organization or, you know, a number of other organizations that are out there marching and it's become very violent. And I would just say, please don't instigate. If you're out there, do not instigate. If you choose to participate, that's fine. But like, don't purposely instigate violence. That just doesn't solve anything. You can't meet violence with violence and expect peace to come you know I the next part is something I have seen all over the internet and I just wanted to stop please 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 if you're gonna quote Martin Luther King quote him but don't try to explain his quotes I literally saw a white person um explaining a Martin Luther King quote to Martin Luther King's son. He had, he was speaking about his father's rhetoric and like about his father's message and someone literally had to white splain his own father's words to him. Like I just, if you're gonna use a quote, don't, don't interpret it for other people. Let people read the quote. It can mean whatever you want it to mean to you, but don't, don't, just don't stop, okay? Just stop it. Um, also, I really think we need to stop with these um, challenges that are on Instagram. I, there's, there's one right now, and I'm sorry if you've done it. Um, I've been tagged in it multiple times, but there, it's a black screen. It's just the hashtag Black Lives Matter, and you tag like 15 of your friends. This is to my white followers out there. I'm so sorry, but I'm going to just at you right now. If you are white and you are tagging a person of color, in this challenge, you need to stop it. You need to cut it out, okay? I am a black person. I know that black lives matter. I don't need to be tagged in a Instagram challenge that's akin to drawing an orange and tagging five of your friends that says black lives matter. And I'm supposed to tag 15 more people to tell them that my life matters, that my brother's lives matter, that my father's life matters, that my uncle's lives matter, that my mom and my sister's I don't know how many sisters, my aunts and my grandmothers and my great aunts, that we, our lives matter, stop it, okay? If you want to, you know, participate in that challenge, go for it. If you, But do not tag a person of color in it. Just don't do it, okay? Stop. Stop it. Um, <laughs> I also really want to just touch briefly on people are blaming victims. I don't, not really the people that are protesting out there, but like, it's been mainly like, I guess, police rhetoric that's, go rhetoric that's going around where, you know, victims of police brutality or of just like racial hate crimes, and this isn't just for black people, but you know, we're blaming drugs or alcohol or the fact that somebody has a criminal record. That doesn't mean they deserve to lose their lives. You know, if it's a criminal offense, that's why we have a criminal justice system. Like, just because someone might have had weed in their system or might have been drunk does not mean they need to just be killed. I've been drunk before. I've smoked weed before. I mean, like, do I deserve to lose my life? You know, if somebody finds out that there's a little alcohol in my system or something, like, I, I just don't, we need to stop blaming victims, okay? And if you've ever, you know, said, well, he was high and acting belligerent with an officer, he deserved to die. If you've ever said that, unfollow me right now, because you just don't need to be in my followers list. We don't need to talk. Because if, if, you, if you feel that way, then, you know, I can't help you. <laughs> um, and I just want to briefly touch on the fact that 
social media has been a great resource. Go on Twitter. There's tons of people tweeting good resources and just their thoughts. Um, go on TikTok. I love TikTok. Quarantine has made me a TikTok queen. And um, I just want to share a, a little TikTok that I saw the other day. Um, and it was a white woman and she was explaining the K.L. Williams theory. K.L. Williams was a former police officer and now he goes around educating police officers on how to act and just he has this theory. And the theory is that 15% of cops will always do the wrong thing. Even given the chance to do the right thing, they'll always do the wrong thing or try to cover something up like they're just not in it for the right reasons. That's only 15% of cops. 15%, another equal percentage, will always do the right thing. They will always do good. They will always, you know, whatever, given the opportunity, they will do good. So that's 30% of cops right there. We have good and bad, but they're equal playing fields. Now he says the other 70% of cops will go along with it. They will cover for another cop, or if a cop is doing something good, they'll go along with it. If a cop is doing something bad, they'll cover for them. That is 70% of cops that are just sheep. And this is a former police officer that is given these percentages just from his experience in the workforce and she added another statistic and she said 40 percent of cops are somehow involved in domestic violence she said that pro that percentage is probably higher because people that are in you know law enforcement families just don't report or even officers that are being abused themselves maybe they just don't report it so that's 40 percent and so she ended the video with this little story if an African-American person walks into a room and there's 10 cops in the interrogation room, four of those cops will hurt you, harm you, murder you, frame you, if given the chance, four out of the 10 cops in this room. The other six will cover it up or do nothing. So that's 40% will harm you if they think they can get away with it. 60% of the cops in that room will cover it up or do nothing. And one cop in the room, one, maybe, maybe one, will help you. That shit ain't right, is it? But that's just a theory by one man. So take it or leave it. But um, yeah. And so I just want to end with a three more points I only have three more points this video has been so much longer than I intended but I sorry I just kept talking um make art art can come out of violence and art can really um touch people way more than words can but like make art write poems draw drawings paint paintings um make films um shoot photographs like make art because art's powerful man art is powerful um also i just want to briefly um circle back to the mlk point these are very quick very quick so if we if you do want to use an mlk quote just remember these key facts martin luther king is on record saying that he doesn't support riots but riots were are inevitable if nothing changes in our society they are inevitable and they will happen so he didn't advocate for riots necessarily but he said that that's something that can happen there's nothing he can do to stop it like if things don't change for african americans people will riot and people are rioting now um he also was on record saying towards the end of his life he said that his old opti optimism was superficial and it needed to be tempered to the current climate of society. He said that, you know, his earlier speeches were very, very optimistic and he realized, you know, towards the end of the latter part of his life that um, he was being a little delusional and things weren't changing as fast as he had imagined that they would. And clearly, how long has it been since he passed away? He passed away in 1968. Let me do a little quick math for you there. Over almost, over 50 years, over 50 years later, things have not changed. Just something to think about. Um, yeah. 
my last piece of advice to everyone is vote. If you don't like what's going on, vote. I have talked to so many people, NYU students, people that don't go to NYU, young people that are my friends, and they don't vote or they're not registered to vote. You have absolutely no excuse if you don't vote. I am registered to vote. I voted in my last local election. I researched my ballot and I voted. If you think Donald Trump is a toxic, toxic individual, which he is, vote. And frankly, if you're one of my followers and you've made it to this far in the video, I don't think you're a Trump supporter, but if there still are some Trump supporters watching, unfollow me right now. I, I just, I don't have time for hateful rhetoric and, you know, supporting hateful speech. So like, if you, if you're going to support somebody who's just spewing hate and is saying that people should be killed, unfollow me because I do not want you in my orbit. I'm sorry. I just don't. Um, vote people. My mother always says, if the average American did as much research on voting as they do before buying a new vehicle, this nation would be so much better off. And I couldn't agree more. You would be shocked. No, you probably wouldn't be shocked. The amount of people that don't know what absentee voting is, the people that are in college and don't even know how to vote, the people aren't, that aren't registered to vote, registering to vote takes two minutes. All you need is a printer and a postage stamp and a pen. A pen. You need to go on the computer. You don't even have to, you don't even need a pen actually. Um, because if you go on the computer, you can type in and fill out the form. All you need to do is print it out, put it in an envelope, put a stamp on it and mail it. It's that easy. Register to vote. If you're not registered to vote, you can unfollow me too. Because I, I, I don't respect you for not registering to vote. Because, yeah, sure, the Electoral College screws a lot of things up. Your vote doesn't matter. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. If you're not voting, you don't get to complain that your vote doesn't matter. I vote. And I will be voting in this presidential election. And I will not be voting for Donald Trump. And if you stay home in this election in November, you can unfollow me too. Because of staying home or abstaining from voting right now or a vote for any other candidate, it's a vote for Donald Trump, okay? If you're staying home, if you're not registered to vote, or if you're voting for some third party candidate that you very well know won't win, you can unfollow me because that is a vote for Donald Trump and I don't endorse Trump supporters either. And you can, you can say, oh, Megan, that's mean, that's insensitive. I don't care. I'm done being nice, okay? Because I'm mad, okay? I'm frustrated. I'm, I'm so upset that African American people are being targeted again and again in this country and if you're my friend i'm so sorry i'm getting emotional if you're my friend or if you're friends with any people of color and you're not doing anything to stop this you're no better than the people that are killing african-americans i'm so upset doing anything you're no better than the people that are pulling the trigger or, or placing their knee on someone's neck or smothering someone you know you're no better so if you don't agree with this unfollow me I don't care but something has to be done if you've made it this far in the video and you've experienced my breakdown. <laughs> I thank you for watching. Please vote. Please donate. Please do something. I... Uh, I love you all. <laughs>